SQL monitor. The SQL monitor report type for active shows the predicates amongst other things, but you don't get that information from the text version of the report. We don't have internet access from our server, so we cannot use active, how to solve this problem. So we need to talk about a few things here about what the active report is, what the text report is, what do we mean by internet access for the active report, etc. The concept of active and text comes from the type parameter. And if you're unfamiliar with SQL monitoring reports, this is how you access them. You provide a SQL ID and you simply pass it into DBMS SQL tune report SQL monitor and you type in type of active and you can choose various kinds of report levels that's beyond the scope of this session. But that's what an active report looks like. And I stress, you really want to use active as much as possible because it's very, very cool. When you run this command, it returns you a clob. And so what you do is you spool that clob out to a HTML file, because yeah, that's what you get by default. Spool it out to a HTML file and then just fire it up in your browser. And that's what gives you something like this. You can see I spooled it out to ctemp SQL tune active. This can be run while a SQL is actually running. I ran this during the execution of a SQL statement. It can also be run after the fact. And if you run it while it's executing, it will dynamically update each time you run it. You can also access this via Enterprise Manager and also your Service Console Performance Manager in the cloud. So it's available just about everywhere. But it's very, very cool. It looks like a real-time SQL execution plan with all sorts of goodies. It shows you the activity, where the time's being lost, how much, you know, the normal stuff you see in a plan after the fact, but this you can get in real time. It's very, very cool. One of the nice things when you have the active report is you can do things like hover over it. So it shows you how many CPU samples you took and you can do things like get other information and in particular, double click on it. And in each line in the row source plan, you can see what predicates were being used. So in this case, it was a join here. If I go down to here, I've got, these are some filter predicates, etc. So lots of goodies that are available to you in the active report. And which is, this is why I say you generally want to use the active as often as you can. But it needs the internet. And why does it need the internet if it's just something that's being spooled out to a local file and dumped onto your local file system? If you go look at the source code underneath that browser page, the way we are rendering that report is down the bottom here, you can see all this text. It's just basically, I'm pretty sure it's a base 64 encoding of your SQL monitor report. And then what we do is we send that up the line to some JavaScript routines that are all sourced from download.oracle.com slash here, plus some more links as well. So we're actually going and getting some JavaScript from the web, from Oracle, bring it down and then processing that information. And that's how we actually render the code. That's why we need the internet to process an active report. The rendering and the, and the fanciness and the interpretation, some of that is done by using JavaScript and we get that JavaScript from Oracle. If you do a text report, we don't do any of that stuff. If you do a text report, you get the same information in, no surprises, a text format. However, obviously you can't double click on a text file. You know, there's no drill down facility. And one of the things which I think is perhaps an oversight is in the text file, Anything that you would normally drill down to in the active, we don't present. We don't put it further down in the report. You simply don't get access to it. So in this case, that is the exact same report here as you saw from the active one, but obviously there's no predicate information. And predicate and filter information is often critical when it comes to tuning a SQL statement. So it's a bit of a problem. Now you will see some things out on blog posts saying, you know, what you can do is download some of the content that's required for an active report, download it locally and then run it. Uh, this was true back in Oracle 10 and 11 when this first came out, but unfortunately uh, is no longer true. It used to be just a few files we download. Now we do a lot of interaction back and forth because the report has become far more sophisticated. So the kind of information you'll see out there in the blogosphere saying you can run it locally is probably out of date and probably won't work. But one of the cool things is the way we implement SQL monitoring is not with JSON, even though JSON's for the cool kids, it's all with XML. If you go look in the DBMS SQL tune package, it actually says you've got report SQL monitor, which is the one we just used, but there's also report SQL monitor XML, which gives you the same information back, not as a clob, whether it's text or HTML, but just as an XML document. And in fact, if you delve into the internals, which obviously customers are not privy to, you'll see that 
Report SQL Monitor actually is just calls Report SQL Monitor XML. This is a, a vast simplification, but almost all the SQL monitoring tools call the XML version to do the actual work. That comes back with an XML. And then we call other DBMS packages in order to format it as HTML or format it as a text, et cetera. So we get a common representation in XML, and then we format it as requested by the user. If you run it as XML, if we flip to this one, this is what you see. It actually is just the same information. This is the base information that we build all the reports from. And it's just, it starts off as reports, SQL monitor. You can see start and end time. It's got, you know, who was running it, optimizer parameters, and all the stuff that was actually presented nicely in a report to us is just sitting here in XML, including, if we dig around, things like the predicates. So if it's just XML, well, maybe we can do something with that. Let's get rid of it. Because I haven't run an SQL in this office hours session, there's a good chance that this SQL may actually not in my shared pool anymore. So what I did was I actually ran the XML report and simply stored it in a table called T so I could reference it for the sake of this office hours session. So normally I would simply say, go get the X XML report immediately on the fly. But in this case, we're actually using T as a pre-created table. It's just got the XML report previously stored in it. But because it's XML and an XML type, I can use the normal XML table syntax here. Oh, I might not be connected as the right user here. We'll see how we go. XML table, drill into the report, drill into the SQL monitor section, look in the plan, look under the operations, get the name and the ID, and I can actually get the predicates. The predicates might be repeated multiple times, so it's an XML type in itself, and then I can XML table to them. Is this gonna work? Yeah, okay, let's uh, run as the right user, user and try again. And that's how I've used the XML format to actually dig into the plan, but also pick up those predicates that were missing from the text reports. If you do want to dig deeper into a SQL monitoring report, whether you're using active or not, maybe there's information in the XML that you'd like to see that the people that wrote the reporting facilities decided you didn't need, you can actually dig into the XML yourself just using your familiar XML table syntax to actually get whatever you want out of the XML format. In this case, you can get the predicates for each of the plan lines. So that's pretty cool. Lots of options there for you.